Hello, this is the Year 5 English Writing for the week commencing the 12th of October. At 5e, you're to finish off your descriptive write on Monday and then complete this PowerPoint on Tuesday. And 5h, complete the PowerPoint Monday and then tomorrow, Tuesday, um, there'll be some allotment themed activities available for you because we should, in theory, have been going into the allotment. So our previous learning on this was last week we wrote an exciting setting description. Our WALT is to note and develop initial ideas, drawing on, reading and research. The success criteria for this will be that we'll understand what an encyclopaedia entry is and why a reference book help us with our research. The real life aim for this is that we need to learn to write to inform in order to display information in a clear and straightforward way. And here's a little fact about the word encyclopedia. It can be spelt two ways, with an A-E or just with an E. Originally a Latin word and spelled with an A-E, or that little A-E joined together there is called an ash. And more recently we've dropped the A, but both spellings are still acceptable in the English language. Over the next two weeks, we're gonna learn how to write and complete an encyclopedia entry for a highwayman. And now an encyclopedia is a factual text containing lots of specific information. Some concentrate on a particular subject, example space or wildlife, whereas others contain a mixture of different information on a variety of subjects. A good encyclopedia should also contain a context page, an index and a glossary. A long, long time ago, before the internet and search engines such as Google, we would use encyclopedias to look up things, places and people that we wanted to research. And you can look up anything in an encyclopedia, pretty much the same way you can Google anything on the internet. Some encyclopedias are dedicated to just one subject, for example, space. In that encyclopedia, all things space related will be listed in alphabetical order. If you're interested in researching the planet Mars, you'd open the space encyclopedia, flick to M and find Mars. And this is what you'd find. So you'd find the title Mars. You'd probably see a picture of Mars and some reference to it. You'd probably see an introduction, lots of information about it. The words highlighted in blue are other words that you can then look up in the encyclopedia. So for example, planet is highlighted in blue. So you could then flick to P in your encyclopedia and research planet and there'll probably be pictures of a planet and factual information about it. There's also kind of dates and times and in here it tells you how many kilometres Mars is away from Earth and whereabouts it lies in the solar system. So it's basically everything you need to know about Mars. So imagine if somebody didn't know what Minecraft was and they wanted to find out, how would you show them? Now I should imagine you'd take them to your computer or your Xbox or your PlayStation and you'd show them what Minecraft was and what a Minecraft world was and the realms and all the different things about Minecraft. Now have a little think about how you would explain that to them or how you'd show them that if they didn't have a computer or the internet. So they could look in an encyclopedia. So here's an example of an encyclopedia entry for Minecraft. So as you can see, it's got a title, it's got an illustration of Minecraft. It has a subtitle. It's filled with lots and lots of factual information. It has dates and it highlights technical terms, in this case, Mojang Studios. So again, you could then key in Mojang Studios or flick to Mojang Studios in your encyclopedia and read all about that specific part of, of information. Although the information and pictures on each page of an encyclopedia can be presented in different ways, you should always see the following. So it should have a main title, an introduction, subheadings, factual information, technical words, which as we've just seen, sometimes be highlighted to indicate that you can read along with that definition can be found somewhere else within the encyclopedia. Probably have illustrations and label diagrams with captions. Sometimes you might also see a did you know box containing other kind of fun facts or other kind of information. So here's an example of how an encyclopedia could be laid out. There's a main title and then an introduction of what your page will cover. A subheading, 
with, with factual information related to that subheading, a further subheading, so you could have another like lots of information there regarding to that subheading, illustrations and label diagrams. For today's independent task, first of all, stick today's handwriting starters in your book or put it on your sheet that you're working on. That can be found on the web page COVID-19 Home Learning under the Year 5 page. Um, we're going to write an explanation of what you think an encyclopedia is. So in include this kind of thing. What kind of information goes into encyclopedia? Is it important to have research books? Why do we need research books such as dictionaries, thesauruses and encyclopedias? Who uses them and when might you use them? Are they obsolete since the invention of the internet? And when you write an encyclopedia entry, is it to entertain or is it to inform? When you've finished, you can email them to the year five inbox and either myself or Mr. Evans will mark them for you. We're excited to see what you, what you come up with. Thank you.